how 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 has this process been like you know i mean you, you wrote the book way back and now you know the movie's out like what is life like these days now that your baby is out into the world uh crazy surreal um still having a hard time wrapping my head around it that it's all happening um and then it's real and that in two weeks, a movie is going to be released about my life. It's crazy. I mean, you know, the book was so touching. The movie is so touching. Like, what was it like, you know, revisiting like this subject matter, you know, for everyone who doesn't know, who's listening, you know, this was about, you know, really a love story between you and, you know, your ex-boyfriend, then husband, you know, that he passed away from a rare form of cancer. Like, what was it like revisiting these issues? It was really healing and therapeutic in a way that writing the book was not. Um, because I was writing the book while I was deep in the throes of grief, it was a it was a hard, lonely, isolating process. Now that I've had, you know, several, you know, it's gonna be eight years that Kit has died and I've 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 I'm on the other side, I think, I hope, of the grief process. Um this has been a much more enjoyable uh uh, experience. And, you know, this has given me the opportunity to collaborate with other people, you know, whereas writing a book, it's, you know, I'm just sitting home alone. Um, so this this was a much more enjoyable, um, and I would say therapeutic experience, too. And uh, I, I feel like making this movie has uh, allowed me to, to remember more of the good times that I had with Kit and focus less on that last year uh, when he died. Was there anything, because I mean, it was your life, right? But was there anything, you know, in revisiting this that you kind of maybe looked at differently or said, you know, wow, like I have a different reaction to this experience than when I went through it or when I wrote the book because you were in such a grieving process? Yeah, the Smurf scene, I have a new appreciation for what Kit must have been thinking and feeling in that moment. Um, I, I, I When we actually lived that moment, it really surprised me. Um, I mean, I knew I knew it was weird that I collected Smurfs, and um, I can understand it being a little off-putting. I, I didn't fully understand why it was the crisis that it was and why it triggered um, uh, the emotional conflict that it did. But, you know, seeing that scene be played out, uh, I, I, I have all new respect and understanding for how hard um, it must have been for Kit to walk in to my apartment in Bloomfield, New Jersey and have the rug pulled out, out from under him like that. What is your current relationship with Smurfs these days? Uh, I remain obsessed. Um, that is my collection that was featured in the movie. Every piece oh, wow. of it, it was only a fraction of it, the collection, I'd like to point out. It's actually much bigger than that. Um, but I, I, I still love the Smurfs. I will always love the Smurfs. Um, I'm not sure what, what the, what's next for the actual collection, though. You know, I had, I, it's been displayed in various incarnations in, in various homes that I've had. And now it's been in the movie. I don't know what the, what the next adventure is for the Smurf collection, um, but uh, I'll figure it out. Well, now they could say that they've made their debut in a movie. So there you go. When you wrote the book, you know, like you said, it is a much different process. You know, I mean, it's your story. I mean, there's publishers and there's people involved, but when, we, you know, Hollywood gets involved and we make a movie, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. I know you were involved in writing this. You know, were you, did you have any hesitations in going forward with this movie, just in the sense of, you know, you're giving over control in a sense, you know, it's the process of making a movie. Absolutely. That was my number one concern was the idea of, you know, I've had total control over this story up until now. Now I need to relinquish some of that control, even though I will be involved. There are now other uh, people in the mix who are going to have their own ideas. And uh, I will be one of those voices, but I won't be the only voice. Um, and that 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 was hard. And that that really was the the one thing that gave me the most pause before heading on this journey was, could I do that? Would I be willing to do that? Um, you know, would I be willing to take that risk? Luckily, 
um, you know, it wasn't that hard to trust someone like Jim Parsons and Michael Showalter, people who I have enormous respect for, and also people who told me right out of the gate that they very much valued my contributions and wanted me to be involved and, and, and saw me as an asset throughout this production and not a liability. Uh, I always felt included in the, in the process, so that made it seem less scary. Did the road to getting this movie made, you know, before Focus Features came in and all these wonderful people that were involved, you know, just because, you know, it's so heartwarming, it's funny, but, you know, at it's tragic, you know, it's, I've never, I've, I haven't cried this much in years, but, you know, at its center, it's, you know, a love story between two men. Like, did you face opposition, you know, like in the, just, it's hard to get a movie made these days. Like, was that like an added hurdle that you had to overcome? No, if anything, it, it was an advantage uh, because the story made the story unique and special. Um, uh, I think the heart, the, the, the obstacle was, and, and you sort of hinted at it, was just getting a movie made is hard, you know, regardless of what the subject matter is, regardless how hot the subject matter is or how um, um, in demand the, the subject matter is. It's it's so hard to get a, a movie made. And even when you think you're well into the process and you're like, you've passed the point of no return, so many things can still go wrong. Um, everything really needs to align perfectly in order for a movie to, to, get, to get made. Uh, and then for the movie to actually be good and for me to be proud of it seems like even more of a miracle. Well, you have reviewed many a movie. You have a longstanding, you know, career as an entertainment journalist. Like where, you know, I'm just curious, like from one gay man to another, where do you think we are now in terms of, you know, like we have bros at the box office, like that was, you know, met with certain controversy, like, oh, it didn't do great. But other people are like, but it, to your point, what you just said, it was made. Like that's the bottom line. Like we have Ryan Murphy and so much like where just, I'm curious, where do you think we are as someone who's been in the business forever? I mean, I, I feel like so much progress has been made. I'm really encouraged by the number of LGBTQ movies that were released this year um, and the variety of the, the stories. Um, but I still feel like we have a, a long way to go. I'm greedy. I want more. I want to see more stories. I would like to see a lot more stories as well. Do you think, well, before we move on from this topic, do you think we'll ever get to the day? I agree. I agree with everything you said. Do you think we'll ever get to the day where we have like, you know, like a George Clooney or like a Brad Pitt, like someone of that, you know, like the hundred million dollar movie, the $25 million salary where you're like, this is a gay man who lives an out gay lifestyle. And, you know, it's a lead role where you're playing the romantic lead and you're straight. Like, do you think we'll ever see that in our lifetime?